2016 was an incredible year in games. I think, actually. Well, yeah. I mean, I can't really speak for everybody or what it was like in general, but it really it was for me, I think. For me, it was like this perfect storm of, at the beginning of the year, getting this new video card. It's so bad. And then having nothing to do in my whole entire day, besides Pet Mindy. I played a lot of games I've been wanting to check out from all these years past there, and then then I played a whole lot of ones I wanted to check out from this year. I, um, I, I really started kind of like whittling down what it was I really liked in games. Not just what I recognize as being objectively good or, or, or bad, but just ones that I liked. This, this one isn't one I played or not that one that won't be on the list so this one might anyways number five firewatch so there's three killer moments here with firewatch i really kind of cement it in my mind as being like top material there's the first one which is the late night in the watchtower there and you're debating if you should like overtly flirt with Delilah and then there's all this baggage of your little intro story and you're still thinking about your wife and whatever happened to her it doesn't even matter at this point because there's this sweet sounding lady over and it's nighttime and you're kind of going back and forth with your dialogue options and... second is when you cross that fence into the little satellite encampment place and you're it's getting scary and you're freaking out and you're talking to Lila and then there's like oh my god this might be a spooky scary game bait and switch this is so terrifying it, do isn't, it doesn't turn out being that but it for a moment it seems like it can and then the third one is when you reach Delilah's tower there at the very, very end when you're running away from the fire and there's the whole big whatever. And at least for me, I was telling her to stay, to wait for me so I could see her. It was, she, she promised she would. I convinced her to stay. She kind of resisted, but then she said that she would stay. And it's when this game was at its best was here because I forgot it was a game for a while. I knew I just wanted to meet Delilah. I was Henry, and that's what Henry wants wanted to do, was just to go see her, was to finally meet up with her, and everything else was kind of forgotten. Both the lady, the wife, I guess I could probably call her, and also everything in like my real life. It was just all gone, and it was just me wanting to see Delilah. When I found her abandoned room there, when I got there and she had already left on the helicopter or whatever, I kind of remembered that it was a video game. And that if she was actually in that room, if I had actually ran into her, if that was part of the game, it would have been the most awkward thing in the world. She would have been this polygon little animated video game character. And there would have been the lip-syncing of her really natural voice that you've been hearing the whole game trying to be matched with the jaw moving, and it would have been... They never could have done proper justice for that. So yeah, I guess I kind of fell in love with Delilah, so that's why it's number five. Speaking of... Greatest Disappointment Tyranny I was so excited for this game. I've been dreaming of doing this real person Dungeons and Dragons all year with real life people. So the idea of playing an RPG that didn't use combat as a crutch and just let the player explore all these alternate fun ways to figure out situations that not a game like this that didn't have to be stupid planescape Bummerman. That all sounded great, but then I 
played the game and it used combat as a crutch. There was great world building, there was all of this open decision based intro paths you could take and it was fun to learn all the names. I really made an effort to commit them all to memory, all these overrulers, and then even when the game started, I found myself kind of grooving out on the art style. It seemed really up my alley. And then a minute later, the fighting started, and it was super boring. I was just pausing and issuing commands. It's like the worst aspects of the turn-based strategy games that I like, and the action RPG games that I I think I kind of like, I don't really know. It doesn't really reward quick reflexes, and it's kind of also too chaotic to allow me to plan out an attack. There's nothing good about it. And then it also happens all the time. There's always combat. And I don't even mean like the story bits, where I could let a one of my baddie group friends kill a prisoner, or my other baddie group friend kill the prisoner, or just have me kill the prisoner. That all is cool, that makes sense. It's the, the fluff that's between all those bits. It's like Obsidian was like, We need to give the player a minute between decisions, those poor kids, so let's plop in three sets of five physical soldiers and let them click a button on them once and watch their character drop away for 15 minutes. I, I know that kind of describes a lot of games combat. I think maybe that's the problem. World of Warcraft, in my mind, sounds like fun. I like the idea of traveling around in the snow walking through some castle town and getting lost amongst all these players and then mounting a dragon bird and flying to a night elf tree town and picking up some weird bark. But then I actually think about playing it, think think about playing it, and it's just useless clicking on monsters and watching it slowly die. That's just not a fun game to me. Tyranny has this cool premise and it plays off that fun moral gray area that Game of Thrones has made so like addicting and nice, but it didn't allow the combat to really keep up with the time for the same sort of way. At the easy difficulties, I'm watching nothing happen, and at the hard difficulties, I'm, I'm just dying and having to do these tedious parts all over again. It's lose-lose. Sucks. Best game of the year that is also the worst game that I have ever played. The Witness. Here we go. A little story. One evening I was sick and I puked all day after accidentally drinking vodka. It was nighttime, probably. Five or six. I hadn't eaten all day due to the, the puking. I fired up the witness. Cause I must have really hated myself in that moment. I was walking through that faux castle section. The four little mazes. And the motion of the game was making me so dizzy. I could see every frame as if it was burned into my eyes. The bright of the trees and the sky and the puzzles are all screaming like a murder of crows outside. Aja made my tongue swell and my, my brow sweat and I couldn't sit still in my chair any longer. I was gonna just stop doing this, playing this game, which was obviously causing me such discomfort, but I couldn't figure out the next puzzle pane that would unlock the gate to the stairs. I had to see what was beyond the gate to the stairs. And then I did, and it was more just more puzzles. And that's the game. It made me hate myself. It, it kind of enjoyed making me hate myself. It was just a mean-spirited experience that just doled out these little small bits of highs of the self-congratulatory revelations in these little carefully calculated amounts, and then it allowed you to drown forever in these failures and frustrations. I made it through the mountain to the elevator and even explored the hotel lobby, and I, I didn't beat every puzzle or I even spark all the stupid little laser beams. 
the little bit of pride I felt for the bits I did beat was just so overshadowed by this shame of not doing more of it. Even if I made it to the end, it really wasn't satisfying. I felt like there was always something else out of reach that I was just too dumb to figure out, and like I was being <laughs> made fun of for it. I kept the game installed on my hard drive for the better part of this year, and and I finally uninstalled it after that, but I never went back and played it anymore. Even after uninstalling it though, I, I still think about it all the time. Awful. And now, the worst game with a douchebag protagonist, Shadow Warrior 2. You know what's funny? You're full of holes. Is that funny? Half the jokes are about the guy's name being long and then the rest just rapid fire stupid things like that i just wanted a tight little fun action game like the like those dooms everyone was talking about but all i got was this vapid little power fantasy about this self-aware ninja who tries to be some sort of asian duke nukem and it was super boring I guess Wong is kind of a funny name, though. Bob fucking died, you awful son of a bitch! Alright then, the best game with a douchebag protagonist. Deus Ex Mankind Divided. This game, maybe even more than any other this year, year helped me realize the aspects of games that I really enjoy. The whole thing that I mentioned way earlier in this video. Like, like I knew I always kind of needed to have a creative character in a game, whether it's a big RPG like Dragon Age Inquisition, or I guess any of the other Bioware ones, or even WCW vs. NWO World Tour. WCW vs. NWO World Tour. Call now, 1-800-WCW-8661, or send 69... I kind of needed to have a game where I could fiddle with the clothes my character would wear more than I would actually spend looking at them wearing those clothes. This game had none of that, but I played it anyway. I had just watched Black Mirror Season 3, then I read this little science-y speculative fiction book called Version Control that came out this year. I just wanted more of that dystopian near future sort of thing. And for that, Deus Ex really provided. It was great for that. After playing it though, I found out I really like kind of sneaking around all silent like and then having to deliberate over which of the few powers or uh, items that I wanted to use out of this larger pool. Which I guess I probably should have actually known about myself, but I guess I forgot. The hip dystopian Prague? 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 Prague setting was just the sugar to get the medicine down. The medicine being that super bland story and awful generic characters. What other lies have you come to tell me? I'm sorry to bother you. Also, dramatically making my little armless sunglasses there slide shut over my eyes when it's time to take care of business, that doesn't work when it happens in every single stupid cutscene. That's dumb. And also, having that big muscular brute of a dude there, that's not an effective bad guy when he's the only bad guy. He should definitely be just the henchman. Crawling through the vents though, that is super awesome. That was really fun. And remotely hacking all those doors while I'm like invisible to circumvent like 15 soldiers to steal a data pad and then 
double jumping all the way up an elevator shaft to skip through this roof while tranquilizing a scouting sniper with my own sniper rifle. Then I escape the scary zone going completely undetected. That's like blissful, super awesome. Forcing me into a stupid, big, dumb set piece of a final fight when I haven't even shot more than four bullets the whole game. That just shows like this lack of creativity on the part of the developers. It's like I was reading a super sweet choose your own adventure book. And then after all the choices I made and all the pages I flipped to, they all just led to the same last page. And that last page just assumed that I killed everything at every choice chance I've got. Where? Where are we? Number three! Inside. God, this is so good. Number two. Now we're back on track. Heroes of the Storm. Assuming it came out this year. It pretty much came out this year. All right, Heroes of the Storm, I felt the biggest accomplishments of my whole entire year while playing this game. And I sadly don't even mean just in the realm of video games, just in general. I also wasted the most amount of time playing this game this year, and not wasting time in the ignorant, narrow-viewed, all video games are a waste of time kind of way, but in that real, legitimate wasting of time. The, the getting nothing out of it, feeling bad about myself, both during and after kind of waste of time. But I also talked to the most people I had, maybe cumulative, this whole entire year while playing this game. Besides Hannah. But I also got the most upset with people this whole year. Definitely way more than Anna. I've never learned so much about a single game before in my whole entire life, and I've definitely never taken one so serious. I've also never had to force myself to stop something while still kind of wanting to keep doing it, and I did here with this game. Heroes of the Storm all in all, was as unhealthy for me as it was kind of necessary. Look at that, Elliot. This is fun. Okay, before I get to my favorite game of the year, let me, if you will, go through the most anticipated. Real quick, then. We got Mountain Belay 2 Banner Lords, Mass Effect Andromeda, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Look at this, you gotta be a stable boy in a historically accurate medieval village. It's so cool. Uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is also awarded Game of Most Impossible to be bad. And you might have to give me my Wii U back, because I will want to play this Phantom Pain in Hyrule. Or I guess I could just buy a Switch, I guess, either way. But speaking of, Metal Gear Survive, your favorite and mine. For Honor, there's no way I'm going to be good at this game, but maybe I'll still want to play it. Thunderbolt! The OWC Thunderbolt 3 dock is for you. It takes full advantage of Thunderbolt 3 technology with throughput of 40 gigabytes per second and offers 13 ports of connectivity. And finally, Sea of Thieves, which is awarded most likely to be bad, actually. And I'll also only play it if you play with me. I don't even think I'm kidding about
about that. All right, here it is, my number one favorite game of all of 2016. It's XCOM 2. It's gotta be. I didn't play XCOM as much as Heroes of the Storm, and it's not nearly as flawless of a package as Inside. It didn't even like seep into my mind the way the witness did. Just burrow in there and stay. But man, it's like all those things I actually liked about those games, and so much more, all in a single serving. It's all of it. I was engaged with the main narrative more than I was in Enemy Unknown whatever that's worth. And this game, it became part of my, my schedule for a good solid month, I think. I could only do a deployed mission once every day because of the stress on my poor little body, but I still always looked forward to it. That was a highlight of, of my day, of getting to that. Uh, that's not counting the managing around the base or anything like that. I teetered between it being like this escapey fun and a management level job. I found the balance between those two things. I let myself get attached to each of the characters that I created and their stories so naturally unfolded in this unique way every time. It was incredible. I would like to, I think, someday go back to it to play it again in like a hardcore mode or maybe with that that long war mod that is coming out or just came out but even if i don't i think i still got more than enough out of my time with it the story i felt in control of the satisfaction i got far outweighed all the frustration there's beauty in the game with this complexity it was an experience that ingrained itself in my life, and it didn't consume it. It just enhanced it. Anyways, thanks for watching, Elliot. Um, be sure to like and subscribe, and follow me on Twitter at Lattimore. I fail you. Today's episode was brought to you by Brillantine Records. At least Andrew Gway or Airlock, maybe the sponsor. But leave a comment below. There's the first good chance to win a Mickey. All right, that's enough.